so I will see what I'm gonna do uh, maybe I'm gonna make a seam for here or I might make a completely new plate for here I don't know what I'm gonna do but I need a lathe anyway so um, I took precise me uh, measurements here with my micrometers and now I'm gonna assemble it I'm gonna do all the adjustments that I need to do and then uh, I will decide what to do with this. So I already found use for my lathe. I can use it to fix my lathe. <laughs> And you know what I can do? For now, I can do a paper spacer here. You know? That's what I can do. Okay, I'll say that again. This is just a temporary solution. Don't judge me too bad. Temporary solution, so I can make the late work until I find a better solution for this. So this is a sticker I have, and it is... Uh, it is 12 tau, so that's exactly how much I need. I need 10, so a little bit more than that is fine. So I'm gonna cut a spacer. I don't have a compass, I'm just gonna make it like very rough. Okay, and 12 tau, of course, is the sticker itself, together with the protective uh, film at the back. So the sticker itself is aluminum, or let me see, no, it's aluminum. No, it's aluminum. I don't know, one or the other. It's either aluminum or aluminum, depending on which side of the world you live in. <laughs> and let's see how precise did I cut it. Oh, wow, look at that. Now well, let's see how it fits inside here. Hmm, not bad. And I can definitely feel now it is the other way around. So, as a temporary solution, one more time. Don't judge me. It is just temporarily. So now we can clean this and install it. So even though I'm planning to disassemble it soon again, I'm going to go through the whole process here of adjusting everything. I want to see if I'm able to do it or not. Just cleaning everything from eventual, uh, from shavings and any debris, because this needs to be really exact and then we're gonna put a little bit of oil everywhere of course it's nice and clean I hope so I'm gonna put a drop of oil here a drop of oil here so the Gibbs strip has those three holes here that match the three screws so now we're gonna slide it in Okay, so now I'm gonna loosen this and we're gonna adjust the gift strip. Now, <clears throat> to make sure there's no play here, I need to, to, to have some lever and Frank Hoos made his own lever here. I'll show you, I, I'm gonna have to make a lever for myself as well and I'll show you what he did. Okay, so now to be able to determine the smallest amount of play here, in this uh, slide I made this lever which I'm gonna lock with the screws that uh, are usually holding the compound okay so you see how strong this lever is locked to the sled so in the same way we're gonna be able to lock the compound now but we're still able to slide this back and forth right but now 
I don't know if you can feel that, if you can see that, I'm going to bring you closer. So now I hope you can see here the plate. Do you see right here? There's a significant amount of play here which is unacceptable. So this is what we're going to do now. So we need 7 mil wrench here, which I don't have. I need a smaller screwdriver. Okay, let me get myself ready here and I'll bring you back. Okay, I don't have a wrench. I have a socket and that makes it very complicated because I should be able to loosen with the wrench and um, tighten with the, nut, with the screwdriver and then tighten with the wrench again. But we'll have to figure out a way to do it with a socket. So, like I said, there's a lot of play here. You can even hear it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen all three and I'm going to snug them. Actually, I'm going to loosen the nuts a lot and then hopefully we're going to be able to tighten the nuts without turning the center uh, screw. Okay, so all the nuts are loose and now we're going to try to just snug the three screws. they're snug now and now I'm gonna return yeah and that's very tight now so I'm gonna return a quarter and I'll tighten the nut so now we're gonna do we're gonna do them one by one we will start with the center one so I'll tighten a little bit more and it starts to drag so that's too much wow. there's one area here where it becomes very tight for some reason and then it loosens again okay this is where I'm gonna leave this one so that's almost vertical, just trying to see if it is going to move, no, it's good, it moved. Hmm, that's going to trick me, so I'm not prepared, I'm sorry guys, I wasn't prepared for that now. How about this, you can hold it like that and then use pliers. I don't know if you see this over here, you should see it. The sled travels very well until it reaches here. There's a chip. Do you see that chip? Yeah. Once it gets there, it gets very stuck. So I have to see what happened here. Yeah. Also these here you see they're like there's a little burr here and here so I'm gonna try to sand this with my file just on an angle a little I know what I'm doing is not very precise but it's just here at the corner so I hope it's not such a big problem it still does it Once it goes past, it's fine. Okay. I ground, I found a little bit more here. And now it is traveling pretty much okay. With just the center, the center nut is adjusted now. I loosened it a little bit also. But now it travels very well and already doesn't have any play but now you can see here we have a little bit of play you see so I'm gonna keep tightening this one little by little it's still 
goes back and forth okay and it still has a little bit of play there I can see it Tighten it here. It's a little bit past 12 o'clock. <laughs> the notch <coughs> went a little bit too much, I think, but see? Oh, actually, it's perfect. Okay, we'll see how this is gonna turn with the screw. For now, it's not attached to the screw, so okay, let's work with this one a little bit. but I don't have a 7mm wrench for the next time I'm gonna make sure I have a 7mm wrench oh, that's perfect now there's no play here but there's still a little, pl a little bit of play in this direction not anymore Yeah, I think we are perfectly good now. Yeah. It's tight, but not extremely tight. I don't know, we'll see how it turns with the screw. So now how this works, actually I can take it out and I can show you again. This is the nut that uh, is held with the two screws to the sled here and there's uh, this center screw which protrudes here a little bit and that gives us the opportunity by tightening one screw or the other to change the angle of this nut so we have to make sure that this nut is absolutely parallel with the center of the screw and that's gonna give us nice and smooth uh, ride so I'm just gonna start these screws Works. I'm gonna leave them loose and now my carriage here is locked so now we're gonna install back the collars here for now I'm gonna leave out this uh, graduated uh, collar with the spring and I'm going to install in my lever okay. well, it moves really nice now there's no drag or anything perfect, let me see when this goes past that area how is it going to be, but here it moves really nice so here it becomes tighter but not extremely tight it's perfect, it's nice and smooth actually oh I love it that's, that's good, so far so good now we have to adjust the nut and if you see my backlash here is coming from the two screws together with the nut are moving back and forth you see, so we have to lock it in place but to lock it in place we have to be careful not to change the angle, you know so we're gonna tighten them, we're gonna snug them both and we're gonna find the best uh, way to tighten them tighten a little bit both of them at the same time that's still nice And we still now we have a little bit of backlash, but not too much. So that's I'm guessing about five tau of backlash, but that I don't think we can do anything about that because this is if you don't know what backlash is, you know the threads inside they mesh like that and they have a little bit of play so when we go one direction, let's say this direction they touch like this and there's an open space 
and then pushes, but when we start going backwards, then first it takes from this position, they come to this position, and only then they start pulling back. You see, that? so that's what backlash is, but about three, four, five tau of a backlash is normal for these mini lathes. You can't get rid of that, as far as I saw in different videos, but there's a way to work around that because it's almost like the timing chain on the timing mechanism of an engine. If you approach it only always on the clockwise, the, the measurements that you need, if you need to go back, let's say, uh, you just go past the measurements that you need and then you approach it in the right, in the clockwise direction, and then everything should be okay. So I'm really happy with how this moves now, even past this area where it was a little bit tighter before, now it is real good. So we still have a little bit of backlash, but that's like I said, when we stole the color we will see how much it is, but I think that's not more than 3-4 tau. So I'm perfect, no play anymore in any direction, so, so far so good. We built the first floor of our building here. So now we're gonna take out the lever again and we're gonna install the collar with the little spring inside so the little spring is a half moon spring comes here in this channel and then just have to push it with something and there you go so now the graduated collar is uh, is turning together with the shaft because the spring is making it tight to the screw but if we still want to turn it individually we can do that and let's say here we're going clockwise okay so now we're gonna zero this and let's see how much is our backlash so five tau this is I can feel it it's about five tau so that's perfect So now we're gonna take our lever out and we're gonna keep this lever because we can e we're gonna use it in future again, I guess. And now we're gonna install the compound mount. But I will put a little bit of oil so it is not dragging badly. I'm gonna put it inside. In this surface here it is it's good to be a little bit oily. But now when we tighten them, it's not moving. That's thanks to our little sticker inside. <laughs> uh, the Bulgarian way of fixing things. Okay, so some oil here. Hmm. Those gib strips require a little bit of attention, I think. I can literally feel some some dings. Mm, not good. I will have to polish them at some point. Okay. For now, we're gonna leave it like that. Okay. So the screw started going, and actually, I have to turn it around. Actually, I told the nuts with the gib strip are on this side too, but they are actually on the other side. locked perfectly now. Wow, can't believe my temporarily solution worked so well. Okay, so now we are almost in the center here of the gib strip and now you can see we have a lot of play here so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna loosen all three nuts. Actually, we're gonna snug them and they are very tight and then we're gonna return a quarter turn a little bit less than quarter of a turn back and now we have a good travel here and a little bit of play but now we're gonna start just one by one okay that's good so we can 
tighten a little bit more and I start feeling drag so I think this is where we're gonna leave it okay so that's it now there's absolutely no play in any direction here and we still have a very nice and tight uh, cross light and a very nice and tight compound so that's it with the adjustments so let's play a little bit with the late now so like I said I ordered a quick change uh, tool post for now we can keep using this one I shouldn't forget this little tab here okay let's do some machining here so we have this piece of brass and I don't know what I want to do with it <laughs> I'm just gonna play a little bit to see if the compound is now moving uh, nice and smooth or it's gonna give me troubles again okay so this is nice and tight that's the annoying part with this uh, compound look that you have to pull back so much so you can just change the angle so I'm considering to do some uh, changes here um, to make a quick compound look but that's a subject for another video okay so let's face this first it has some burr here so let's clean it up I don't know what we're gonna do with it but oops sorry but let's clean it up we'll do some facing first and then we're gonna do turning uh, this way So if you notice here, this left a little bit of a nub here in the middle. This means that my tool is not in the right height. It needs to be a little bit higher. But I don't have any shims or anything. With the quick release that I ordered, there is a nut that you can turn and adjust the height of the tool. Here though it is really hard. You need shims to put underneath. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use shim <laughs> have to order some shims too but actually i don't need them if i have the two post the quick release two post so let's try this again okay there's still a little bit i can see it i can feel it but for now it's good There's just uh, some weird satisfaction when you watch doing that. So that's a really, really little rough. So now we're going to do the same thing but with the power feed. So I'm not an expert so I don't, I'm not going to explain in details everything. There are fantastic videos online from experts who can explain everything that, all of that. But I just wanted to show you here. You see this screw is turning and it has a gear here so it's always in a specific ratio with the spindle and I have the set of gears to change here so we can change the ratios between this screw and the spindle so we can have different pitch for the when we do threads but now we're not gonna do we're not gonna get cut threads we're just gonna use the screw for power feed so we can have a nice and smooth movement of the carriage here so we can have a really nice finish on our part here 
So to engage the power feed, we just need to turn this lever here, which engages the half nut. There's two half nuts here inside, which with this lever just go around the screw and then they start moving the carriage with the screw. So that's, that's the easy part. So we still have the uh, lever here as we did our, fi our last cut. So I'm just going to turn it, uh, let's say, 10 tau so we can uh, do another cut of 10 tau here and we're going to do it with the power feed this time. I just have to be careful to stop it before the part hits the tool post, right? So you see now it started moving, the handle, the wheel is moving itself, I'm not touching it. And now it's making our final 10 tau cut. I shouldn't have done that. I should I should have retracted a little bit the two before I moved it back because that probably left a spiral cut here. No, actually it looks good. So now we have a very nice finish. So when we do the movement by hand, we can't do it so nice and smooth. But when we do when we want to have a really nice finish here, we just engage the half nut and the power feed moves the carriage for us and does this fantastic fit. So, I think that's going to be enough for today. Uh, I'm going to make another video soon because I got today some other parts. I have a four jaw chuck here and there's a big difference between the three and four jaw chucks. And I'll show you what the difference is and what else did I get. Yeah, I have a half inch chuck with uh, Morris taper number two, which matches the tailstock, test dial indicator, more Christmas gifts for myself. So, yeah, that's it for today, guys. So thanks for watching, guys. And if you're interested in uh, stuff like that, I'm gonna keep showing you more videos about this as I learn, because probably those of you who know very well this stuff is are laughing at me at what i'm doing here but i'm sure there are other people who don't know about anything about lathes and they're gonna be having fun with me learning together so stay tuned for more late videos now late night videos <laughs> thanks for watching guys bye